Should I listen to my feelings or what's inside my head? Should I act on what's inside my heart or analyze it instead? It's hard to know the answers. Guess I never learned the rules through the things they never teach in school. Right from wrong, wrong from right, or neither here nor there. Disability insurance was as much a curse as a blessing. On the positive side, it provided William with a steady tax-free income for the rest of his life, released him from the burden of working, freed him to write about the disease that was consuming his body and friends who had already died, and about feelings that he was better able to express in verse. The poems were new songs in his life, and whether in New York, Europe, or at our country house, he brought this, his spiral notebooks with him and wrote far into the night. There were other songs, however, not so harmonious as verse, like alcohol. He and I had come from such different kinds of families. Alcohol in my traditional Brooklyn Jewish family was virtually never a part of our consciousness, though we always had a bottle of schnapps, rye, whiskey kept on the top shelf of the kitchen cabinet, presumably placed so high so children couldn't get their hands on it. When my extended family came for dinner during a holiday, for instance, the men gathered around in the kitchen to have a shot of schnapps. L'chaim, my father said, and in one gulp, gulp the men swallowed the liquor. Then the bottle was returned to the shelf where it lay undisturbed, collecting dust until next year. Alcohol, on the other hand, was a frequent guest in William's house. There was always a subtle clash between these two cultures in our relationship. I was the ever-vigilant watchdog, scowling if he ordered a second drink at a restaurant, refusing another one for myself as an example whether I wanted it or not. I never had a, to say a word, merely to pause in mid-sentence or look away for just a moment. The message was clear, don't. He usually didn't, but he resented my controlling behavior. And there were a number of reasons why I controlled William's drinking. The propensity toward alcohol was in his character. We both consumed too much. My hostile attitude toward drinking provided a break upon his indulgence. I recognized that he had an alcoholic personality and I was determined to do everything I could to prevent him from going over the, uh, the line. There was an irony to William's alcoholism. In all our years together, he was never a more passionate and thoughtful lover than when he was drunk or stoned. Those were times like no other when he connected with me physically and emotionally, when his kisses came from the heart and his touch like a buzz of my whole body. His eyes were alive, gazing into mine, then to other parts of my face, while his hands gently caressed me, magically transforming us in time and place as if he were making love on a magic carpet. Given this irony, my conflict about his drinking is obvious. When he came to bed tipsy from alcohol or too much smoke, I was morally indignant, yet enthusiastic about the potential sex. If angry at him, I would discourage the sex, but if I ignored the indulgence, I would encourage the drinking. I did not know what to do, botching it up most of the time. I went to Catholic school 12 years Still I got all these questions That could fill an overflowing pool 